something to do with our heart for God. Yan po ay hango po sa Deuteronomy chapter 6. Ito ay sa Shema. Verse 4 and 5. But uh, just focus on verse 5. But uh, let me read Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse, verses 4 and 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. May the Lord bless the reading of this word. It is a prayer of my heart this morning, and even the members of the administration, that for this year 2019-2020, that although we are in a Bible school, it's very ironic, that we are in a Bible school, yet our topic is about a heart for God. Sabi nga ng iba eh, mas talikado daw pag nasa seminary ka because um, every day na nag-aaral ng salita ng Panginoon at uh, nagiging kalos daw. Tumatalbog na lang daw ang salita ng Panginoon. Probably because of intellectualism, there is somewhat pride, lalo pag nasa seminary ka, kaya sabi ko nga sa uh, aking anak, ikaw ay mag-aaral ka sa Westminster, you see to it na huwag mo, uh, huwag lalaki yung ulo mo pag ikaw ay nag-aaral ka ng banal na kasulatan. But rather, uh, as you read the word of God, you will begin to appreciate his majesty, His goodness, His faithfulness, at yung pagiging Diyos niya sa ating mga buhay. Man places a high price on the, external, on the externals. God examines deep within that man for something more. Man judges one on the basis of one's appearance, but God predicts the heart. A heart for God. The Bible never talks about the human heart as being the organ which pumps blood in the body. In the Bible, the heart is the control center of our affections. From our heart flows love Close desire, fondness, even cravings and passions. At least I will be speaking for two tomorrow. What? Devotion lang naman. At, uh, 20 minutes lang naman. Hindi ni sa akin. <laughs> But I will not talk first on our devotion, loving God with pure devotion. Then next time, uh, tomorrow, I'll be talking about enthusiastically worshiping the Lord. How do I love God passionately? Jesus gives us four ways to love God. You go to the book of Matthew and even the book of Mark, quoting from the book of Deuteronomy 6. It is found in his reply to the question of someone asking him to give him the greatest commandment of the scripture. Because Jesus answered the great commandment, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Here we can see that it tells us first that you must love the Lord your God with all your heart. Kailangan mahalin natin ang ating Panginoon Diyos buong puso. At ano nga ba ang kahulugan nito, pag-ibig na ito sa ating Panginoon? To love the Lord with all your heart means to love Him 
with pure devotion. We are called to love Him with all of our heart. Alam natin yan, na mga lalaki na nangliligaw noon, diba? when you met your fiancé, diba? and it captures your heart, And pag sinagot ka, makupo, talaga naman. You can see the loop of love. Ano nasa naman, of course, sa mga, meron tayong mga, wala pang boyfriend, girlfriend, susunod na yan. When you love someone with all your heart, you think about them almost all the time. Hindi ka nga makapakali. I don't know, but that's my experience. You long to be with that lady. Minsan, kadalasan, siya ang priority ng iyong buhay. Even now, sa family, we call this being in love and it is wonderful. It is so exciting that many people are overwhelmed by it. And to love God with all your heart, it's much like that. It means that your heart is devoted to Him. It means that you are faithful to Him. It becomes the most important, I'll not say thing, but the most important in your life. God is the most important. A.W. Tozer once said that we are called to an everlasting preoccupation with God. Let's say A.W. Tozer. Our feelings of affection have varying degrees of intensity. The more intense our affection, the more valuable the object and the more we are willing to sacrifice to heaven. Jesus says where your treasure is, that is where your heart is in Matthew 6, 21. In other words, the things we value and treasure, we love. One example in the Old Testament, as far as the kind of devotion, the kind of devotion that we're talking about is when we think of King David. King David is an example of someone with affection for God. King David has great affections for God. God says that David is a man after his own heart. God sees David's heart and affection for him. We know David's heart because of what he says in Psalm 16, 2. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good besides you. Wow. Imagine David's talking about someone we know. We walk by and hear him say, I have no good apart from you. Wow. He must treasure and love that person. Is there another expression about David's love for God? Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips will praise you. Psalm 63 verse 3. You see, when our affections for God exceed life, then our affections for God are at the highest peak of passion. God's loving kindness is of greater value to David than anything in this world. David would rather have God's loving kindness than gold or silver, his family, position as king, or help. David loves God. We know what it is in David's heart because his lips give evidence. David's heart is filled with affection for God. And his lips spill out words of praise. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Matthew 12, But the love that we, are, we have for God has another characteristic. You are not only to love God with all your heart, you are to love Him with all your soul. To love God with all our soul means that our love for God ought to be full of passion. And we are all people of passion. 
while we deny our emotions, our emotions have a way of rising to the surface in spite of all our efforts to hide them. But of course, sa kapanahonan natin ngayon, people are disillusioned and become apathetic. The word, the word apathetic, by the way, is without passion. The word pathos, Greek word for that. Apathy without passion. But you see, we cannot afford to be apathetic about our love for God. In other words, we must be excited about our relationship with God. We must be passionate. In the Song of Solomon, we hear about the passionate kind of love we ought to have for God. It is likened to the love between a man and a woman. Let me quote some verses. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is more delightful than wine. For those of you who are teaching hermeneutics, of course, marami na interpret ang allegorical interpretation of this, but I don't think it that way. As far as, but of course, marriage is um, the climax, of course, as the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, we hear, show me your face, then hear your voice, Song of Solomon. And then again, he has stolen my heart with one's glance for your eyes. So you see here, real love is passionate love. To love God with all our soul means that we must be involved with all our emotions, if you will, in our relationship to Him. And when you, really, and when you have really given Jesus all your heart, then it is easy to become excited about following Him. Our love for Christ begins with a pure devotion expressed itself by being full of passion. But there is another element there. To love God with all your mind. While we ought to be excited about Him and express our emotions, we're not talking about an emotional expression that bypasses the mind. There is a certain brand of Christian teaching that contends that the mind can get in the way of your relationship with God. Now, it is true that when people rely on their own intellectual capacity to figure out God, they always come up short. Beloved, God cannot be figured out by human minds. And if you wait until you figure it out, you may not get in on the blessing and the process. Our minds can be a hindrance, but our minds can also be a help. And it is clear from the scripture that God fully intends for our minds to be involved in our love for Him in Romans 12. We are told that our minds need to be renewed. In 1 Peter, we are told to prepare our minds for work. And here, we are told to love God with our entire mind. A mind committed to Christ and being transformed by His renewing power can be, I'll say, a tremendous asset in the kingdom of God. Christianity makes sense, and anyone who thoughtfully considers the plan of God will soon be able to effectively communicate just how reasonable Christianity really is. Not only that you are to love God with all your heart, all your soul, and your mind, you are to love Him with all your strength. By the way, Christianity is not just a heart dedicated to God. A soul full of passionate love for Jesus and a mind committed to thoroughly consider the whole world of God. Christianity must be fully lived out. To love God with all your strength means to love God in all that you do. Colossians 3 17. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. You see, Christianity that is just in the heart and in the head may be either, I'll call it sentimentalism or intellectualism. 
for Christianity to be alive, it must be lived out. That is what makes the Christian faith the most powerful force in the world. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. To truly love God, you must love Him in all you do. A distinct Christian lifestyle must be evident in the way we live our lives, even conduct our business, function at the job, and even how we deal with our wife or husband or children. Change tells us that we ought to be doers of the world. Reflecting on this particular text, and talking, reflecting on the experience of the Israelites, we know that as far as the people of Judah is concerned, they did not love God with all their heart. You know the story as far as Judah is concerned people of Judah. They are guilty of not loving what God loves. That's why when I reflected on this, if the people of Judah love God with all their mind, they should have promoted God's glory. They should have never think of entertaining evil thoughts or evil ideas. If the people of Judah love God with all their strength, dapat ginamit nila lahat ng kalunang mga skills, talents, influence to advance their relationship with God. But God was not pleased with them. People of Judah did not love God with all their heart, mind, strength. That's why he pronounces woe to Jerusalem. Because their heart is far from love. Their visits to the temple are only out of tradition, not to give him glory. They enjoy eating the feast of the covenant, but do not enjoy the God of the feast. So you see, beloved, God is to be our all in all. He is to be our everything. It is not an option. God commands that, that we have a heart full of affection for Him. We may not have a divided heart, half for this world and for God. You know, again, a further reflection, bakit kaya hindi talagang minamahal ang Diyos? I'll say, that prideful people do not love God. Their pride makes them blind. Going back to the experience of Judah, the people of Judah, what brought about the decline in their love of God? God reveals that the enemy of Judah is not the Assyrians, by the way. The enemy of God's people is their pride. God hates pride and God will go to great lengths to humble his people. God's people learn humility through lamenting and mourning. He desires for their pride to vanish and that they see their weakness, God's glory. Further reflection, everyone who is proud in heart is a abomination to the Lord. Assuredly, he will not be unpunished according to Proverbs 16. Of course, we are not immune to the dangers of pride. Again, from Scripture, James teaches us that the source of pride, even the source of our quarrels and conflicts among us, in our hearts seeking to satisfy our desires for those things we want. Why do we get angry at people? Angry with at an animal with a person. 
Maybe our heart has an affection for respect and that person doesn't show us respect. Maybe we enjoy food and we see someone take the bigger piece. James says the answer is humility. Humility. Ito yung kailangan sa lingkod ng Panginoon. We are to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. God is opposed to the proud that gives grace to the humble. It is important for us to understand the relationship between pride and our love for God. Our pride gets in the way of our loving God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength. Think of how pride damages our affections for God. Pride helps us think and live as though we don't need God as much as we do. Further reflection, pride makes us independent. So we don't live under God's authority or obey His commands. Pride makes us think we are wise and discerning. People with pride don't pray as they should for God's wisdom. People who think themselves to be wise don't study God's word to seek His wisdom. People with pride don't need or listen to the counsel of others. Well, we might say, I'm so glad I don't have pride like the people of Judah. And you will say, well, my pride is under control. But we have to battle. How can we battle this pride? Again, reflection on the Philippine believers. The people of Philippi did not love God as they should. And it showed in the way they argued and complained. Remember that all these illustrations coming from the scriptures from the Old Testament, not the New Testament. Philippians, my God, do nothing from selfish or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not really look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. Have this attitude in yourself to its also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not depart equality with God a thing to be cross, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bond servant, and being made in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. I'll not expound it. But to combat this pride, do nothing from selfishness or conceit in verse 3. Regard others as more important than ourselves, verse 3. Don't just look out for our interests but also the interests of others in verse 4. Don't seek a high position but be a servant. Become empty in our importance, verses 6 to 7. Be obedient to God even to the point of death, verse 8. Simple instruction. If we follow these simple instructions every day, we will be pleasing to God. Our love for God will increase. We will better understand God's heart. Beloved, we cannot do this on our own. We must start by humbly asking God for His help. In other words, we need to die to self. Daily. And seeking humility and affections for God will grow. We will grow in our obedience to love God with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our, with all our strength. A heart for God. It's my prayer that for the year 2019, 2020, You will pray with God for a humble heart which genuinely loves Him. 
thereby it is translated in our walk with Him, in our love for Phidias, in our love for one another, in our love for our ministry, in our love for our students. Thank you, God, for a humble heart that genuinely loves Him. Thank you, Father, for your word this morning. Thank you. We love because you have first loved us. Give us a heart that loves you. In Jesus' name.